This podcast is about why it's hard for professors to do anything else. I used to be a professor. Then, for a number of reasons, the main one being that I wanted a life of action, not just of thought, I went into business. At first it was hard, and it continues to be hard, even though the ways in which it is hard are increasingly gratifying. In any case, to the extent that business is hard for me, it's because being a professor is very, very easy, and my 20 years as a professor were basically 20 years of vacation. I was the hardest working professor I knew, but as a professor, when you work, it is always, always on your own terms and in your own way. If you are a very serious scholar, which means that you are one professor out of a thousand, at most, your professorial duties sometimes involve very high-level thought. And no matter what kind of professor you are, your professorial duties inevitably involve extremely low-level automatic work, work that is about as challenging as what a secretary does, at most. But one thing being a professor absolutely never involves is medium-level or medium-high-level thought. It never involves figuring out practical things. It never involves dealing with evolving situations. As a professor, there are no problems that arise that have to be dealt with. There are pseudo-problems, self-generated problems, all of which are byproducts of department politics and the like. But there are no real problems, no real exigencies. And apart from the extremely odd, in both senses, professor who does very high-level work, and I stress that that is only one in a thousand, everything a professor does is remedial in nature. That material may seem difficult if you're a student sitting in a professor's classroom, but imagine that you learned some program, such as WordPress, and you had to teach it over and over again, year in, year out, for decades. How hard would that be? Not very. And what a professor does is easier than that. I put my professor time to extremely good use, doing very high-level work. And high-level work develops your intellect, but it does not strengthen your will. It does not develop your agency. Even if you are doing extremely high-level work, maximally high-level work, your agency withers if you are a professor. And the difficulties I encountered when going into business, and that I still encounter, albeit in increasingly rewarding forms, have to do with an atrophied agency. Just as one's muscles atrophy when one is in a coma, so one's agency, one's will, in other words, one's ability to act and to act with resolve, withers when one is a professor. Being a professor is like being in a kind of coma. I never had a lot of respect for professors. As an undergrad, I had a small amount of respect for them. As a grad student, I had less respect for them. When I myself was a professor, I had next to no respect for them. And now I have absolutely no respect for them, now that I know what real work is. Being a professor can be a very rewarding career, or at least at certain junctures in the past, when the academy was still pure, it was a very rewarding career. Be that as it may, one thing I don't think any sane person can do is have any respect for his professors. It's not possible to respect them because they don't deserve to be respected. And they don't deserve to be respected because being a professor is not a job. It's a pseudo-job. It's a non-job. It's permanent vacation. In fact, if you're a professor and you don't have children, your life is easier than that of someone who is on vacation with his wife and children. The married man or woman on vacation has to do a lot of things that he does not want to do, and he has to deal with problems that constantly arise. Professors don't have to deal with contingencies, and on the rare occasions that things come up, they are dealt with in non-real time and in a very circuitous and corrupt manner through committees. Professors are not good parents. They are amoral. So even though some of them have children and therefore presumably go on outings and vacations with their children, they do not do the same amount of work on such outings as a normal parent, simply because they, these professors I'm speaking of, are themselves like children. They are in a perpetual infancy, on a perpetual vacation, a vacation which, because of their brittle neurotic characters and second-rate minds, they are not even able to enjoy. In my last podcast, I talked about how cowardice and laziness are the same thing. When you look at the behavior of a professor, you see just how true that is.